Okay, so I've had this Steam Deck now for about four months, and in that time, I've put together some accessories that I think work very well with it. So these are not gonna work for everybody. You know, some people might find some of these to be a little bit excessive or just, you know, unnecessary, but hey, everyone's different out there. So I'm pretty sure, you know, some people are gonna find some use out of some of these accessories right here. Cause you know, there's a, there's a few of them. There's a good amount um, for you to pick from if you're looking for accessories for your Steam Deck. Let me know down in the comment section, which one of these accessories you think will work well for you or for your Steam Deck. So first off, I've got the Kill Switch case from Debra. This is the first version of the case which was close to being perfect. It's thin and it adds little weight to the deck. It's the best fit I've found so far, you know, and I've tried a lot. The cutouts for the buttons and the input-output ports are very precise and it's got a grippy texture that'll prevent the deck from slipping out your hands by mistake. The only issue I have with it is that the magnetic system they plan on using didn't work out, so the magnetic stand it came with has been pretty much useless. There's a second version releasing in the quarter one of 2023, which is supposed to have an interlocking stand that should work very well. You can pick up either the essential kit which includes the case, the kickstand and a skin of your choice. I've personally got the teardown skin on my Steam Deck. Or the travel kit which also includes black stick grips and the travel cover. The travel cover to me is a must have I'll be honest with you guys. It's got a solid build and it makes bringing the deck around a lot easier and safer without a separate bag that is. It's only compatible with the kill switch case so it's not going to work with any other ones. The next accessory on my list is a tempered glass screen protector from Dbrand again. These have become a necessity nowadays for protecting the screens on valuable devices like phones and tablets. The Steam Deck is no different. I've got the 512 model which comes with an anti-glare edge screen so I immediately wanted a screen protector on the deck as soon as I got it. There's been some negative talk about using screen protectors with the deck where folks are saying it affects visual performance or reduces the anti-glare effects on the highest model. Personally, I haven't witnessed anything like this. Instead, it's kept my deck protected at all times and I feel better that it's there and it's also tempered glass. The installation process is fast and easy and this can be bundled up with the kill switch case combo when you're ordering from dbrand. Amazon has also got some cheaper options if you know the budget is limited for you. The next item on the list is an L-shaped magnetic USB-C adapter. This one is a unique accessory that's come in handy for my Steam Deck. There's different kinds out there, but you wanna make sure you get ones with power delivery above 45 watts and a high data transfer. Since Valve has decided to put the charging port on the top side, this has been a welcome solution for prolonging the lifespan of my charging cables. It's also made it possible to use the kill switch case on the Steam Deck with the official docking station. You definitely want one that's got strong magnets so it's not disconnecting all the time. The next accessories are USB-C fast charging cables. I love the threaded ones for their durability and these ones are detached and will require a power block to work. The original charger that came with the Steam Deck is not detachable and also not threaded, which are two traits you know that lead to cable damage a lot quicker. I've got a long one for charging the deck when I'm stationed and a short one when I'm on the move. The fact that they're detachable also makes it easy to switch between power banks and wall chargers. Our next item here is a 45 watt GAN USB-C power adapter from Ugreen. This one's got two USB-C ports for simultaneously charging two devices. When both are being used, you'll only get 25 watts from one and 20 watts from the other one. These will charge the Steam Deck, but not as fast as it could be charging. And if you wanna get that full 45 watt required for charging without the slow charger indicator, then you'll need to use only one port at a time. I love this power adapter for a few solid reasons. First of all, I love the small form factor and the fact that the wall plug folds up for easy storage and transportation. I also love that I can charge a second item with it while charging my Steam Deck. Power banks are up next on the list, and this is very important since the Steam Deck does have the best battery life. There's a lot of them out there to pick from, but you want one that can supply a minimum of 45 watts of power through USB-C. Besides power, you also want it to be small and portable, making it easy to bring around. Some other things to look out for is battery capacity and how fast the power bank charges from zero to 100. I've gone through a few already and I've found that the best portable ones have a maximum capacity of 20,000 milliamperes. This tends to be enough for getting about one and a half of a full charge while charging in sleep mode. When it comes to how fast the power bank will charge, you'd want to look at the maximum power it can receive through USB-C. The higher, the faster it'll charge. If you're looking for something on the cheaper end, check out this portable one from Amazon with up to 65 watts of power delivery through USB-C for input and output. It's also got 20,000 milliampere of battery capacity and I found that it works great overall. Another portable option, although a little bit more pricey, is this one from TechSmarter. It's also got 20,000 milliampere hour of battery capacity and a single 65 watt USB-C output and input port. If you find that weight isn't a problem for you, you can check out this one from TechSmarter as well. It's got 30,000 milliampere hour of battery capacity and a single 45 watt input and output port. You can also check out this massive brick with a 100 watt and a 65 watt USB-C port for both input and output 
output. This one also has an insane 50,000 milliamp hour battery capacity, which can give the deck a full charge from zero to 100% about four to four and a half times. The next item you might want for your Steam Deck is a high capacity SD card or a few of them, depending on how many games you plan on storing for quick access. I've got the model with the highest storage, which comes with a fast 512 gigabyte SSD storage, but turns out that's still not enough for most people. The lowest model comes with only 64 gigabytes of onboard storage, so for anyone picking that up, getting an SD card is a no-brainer. There's really no noticeable drop in performance or anything similar when playing off an SD card versus the onboard SSD, at least not that I've noticed. Personally, I use a 512 gigabyte SD card from SanDisk, but you can go as high as one terabyte. The next item on the list is the Deckmate. This one isn't for everyone, but for people who want more playing time while on the move. I got this one off Etsy and there's different bundles and parts that can be picked up to work with the system. The one that I got came with four pieces. Two identical pieces that attach to either a power bank or any other USB C device you want connected to the deck. The other pieces can be attached to the deck. One of them only works without a case on it, and the other one has to be attached to the back of the case using 3M adhesive. The system uses a lock and click system for attaching together, and it works great for playing longer when used to attach a light power bank to the back side of the Steam Deck. Next up, we've got the Soundcore Liberty 4s. These are Bluetooth compatible and work great alongside the deck for a portable gaming setup. They're also very lightweight, and I like to consider them as a budget friendly alternative to the AirPods Pro from Apple. It's got a wireless charging case that charges wirelessly as well, or through USB C. The battery life can last up to 5 hours without the charging case, not the 15 hours with it. You can also use them with any other device, including ones running iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. One really cool feature of the AirBuds is a dual connection mode, which allows you to connect up to two devices at the same time. The AirBuds then switch automatically, depending on which one was in use first. A docking station is the next item on the list. This wouldn't be necessary for everyone, but the ability to connect external devices to the dock is very important to me. The official docking station comes equipped with six ports to expand connectivity. There's three USB 3.1 ports, which can be great for hooking up USB peripherals to the deck, one HDMI and display port for connecting the deck to larger TVs or monitors, and finally, there's a gigabit ethernet port for fast wired internet connections. One problem though is that the official dock doesn't play nice with third party cases like the kill switch from dbrand. It seems to me like it was designed to be a perfect fit for the Steam Deck, but you can use the L-shaped USB-C adapter from earlier to solve that issue. You also get another 45 watt power block, just like the one you got when you, you know, got the Steam Deck itself. This certainly adds to the price, and that amount is way higher than pretty much every third party dock out there. If you're on the lookout for a more affordable alternative, then you can check out this one from Amazon. It's got the same type of ports as the official dock, minus the display port and the charging adapter. It's also about half the price of the official dock and doesn't require a USB-C adapter to work with the case on the deck. Its design also means it's larger and a little heavier than the official dock. If you prefer portability or OEM products, then the official dock would be a better choice. But if your budget is limited and you want something that just works, then the Amazon alternative is the way to go. With both, you can get up to 4K at 60Hz while navigating the game mode interface and up to 1080p at 60 frames per second during gameplay. To get 1080p, you'd want to change the resolution for each game in the properties menu from default to native and then switch it in the game settings. I'll have you guys know that the higher the resolution, the greater the impact on performance, so you'll have to reduce the game's graphics settings to accommodate high resolutions. Now, if you decided to get a dock for your Steam Deck, then you'll also need a controller to game. I've tried out a few, but my favorite so far has been the Xbox wireless controller, which I got from my Series X. It connects through Bluetooth and works great for controlling gameplay from the comfort of my couch, and I love it. The PlayStation DualSense and DualShock controllers also work great via Bluetooth, as well as pretty much any Bluetooth controller that I've used with the deck so far. Next up is this foldable keyboard and touchpad combo. If you plan on using the docking station or even just using the deck in desktop mode, then this comes in very handy. I initially tried using a separate wireless keyboard and mouse, but I found that those weren't very portable, so I picked this up from Amazon. It connects through Bluetooth and works well enough for the few times when I'm using desktop mode. I've also found that it works great for playing games like Civilization VI that's more strategy than action or adventure. Next up is a portable monitor, which I think is a little excessive, but it's still a nice accessory to use with the Steam Deck. Personally, I carry around a portable monitor when on the road to use with my laptop sometimes, so I find that using it with the deck can be fun as well. The one I've got is from Amazon and connects to the deck through a single USB-C cable. It'll let you play at a higher resolution than the native 1280 by 800 on the deck, as well as provide you with a larger display to game on. Some of them come with inbuilt batteries, which is great as well, since the ones without, you know, end up drawing on a little bit of power from the deck, and we already know that the deck does not have the best battery life. Next Next item is an external SSD, and this one is a great way of transferring files between your PC 
and the Steam Deck. You can pretty much get them in a variety of sizes, but the one that I've got is from WD and it's got one terabyte of storage on it, which, you know, has not failed me so far. Finally on the list, I've got carrying bags. The last item is almost mandatory as far as I'm concerned. Personally, I've used two different kinds so far, but I definitely prefer the shoulder bag over the other one. It's much more trendy, looks cool, and holds the deck and accessories a whole lot better. It's also easier to bring around since I can throw it across my shoulders versus having to carry it, you know, in my hand. I picked up the shoulder bag off Amazon a few weeks ago, and I've loved it ever since. It doesn't work well with large accessories, so you'd want some small ones when using this. For me, it's able to hold the deck with a travel case on, a portable power bank, charging cables, power adapter, docking station, and my phone. Those are the essentials for me and anything else I usually don't use very much so I just end up putting them in my laptop bag which you know works out great. It's also got a hard shell material on the back side to help protect the deck and accessories when there's impact from falls. That's pretty much everything on my list currently. I've linked everything down in the description below for anyone that's interested so use those for more info on each item. If you know of any other cool accessories that I haven't mentioned that work great with the Steam Deck, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. I'll catch you all in my next video. It's Tommy and I'm out y'all.